Hey everybody, it's Steve from Mad Pig Customs here, and uh, I'm here with Phil, aka Buffalo Diller, uh, who is a good friend of mine and an integral part of the team here at Mad Pig Customs. So we're going to talk a little bit about the famous 1894 <laughs> SBR. Yeah. So this gun has gone viral a few times. Um, this was the original. This is now uh, going all over the place. So. We want to talk a little bit about the background of it, how Phil came up with it, and why we can't build you the exact copy of this, but how we do do a Marlin or Henry SBR. So, Phil, when when you built this, everything about this is a one-off, right? Right, everything was prototypes, because when Midwest first came out with their handguard, uh, the first thing I did with it was I cut it in half and cut it into three pieces and welded it back together. Um, because the normal handguard, the tenon, which holds the handguard onto the rifle, would have intersected with the threads. So I sectioned it off, had it re-welded back together, and then cut a new dovetail. So that's completely proprietary. But luckily we have the Henry handguards that also fit and can be modified to work for the uh, SBR profile with the 11 or 11 and a half inch barrels. Yeah. So we cut the barrels to 11 or 11 and a half inches typically when we do these, whether it's a Marlin 1894 or a Henry Big Boy 357 44 mag, right? So now, Phil, let's talk a little bit about the, so the optic rail. The optic rail was a proprietary part that was made by XS so, for us. <laughs> yeah, so this was a prototype that... Uh, Excess and us developed together, you can see that it is a long boy. Now, like everything else on this gun, Phil cut it down, modified it to fit his gun. So he's using the Wild West gun's rear sight on his as the peep sight. And uh, I have an excess front. Yep. That yeah. I just, when I cut the rail back, I just milled it in there. Yeah. So on these when we made these again these are proprietary these aren't a uh we did these for a movie that we'll be able to tell you about at some point um these are cut to a specific length that's why they are not a factory option from excess um yeah they'd be too short for any other factory gun yeah out there. so uh again that top rail is proprietary right um the chisel stock now this guy this kind of brought new life into this gun. So, Phil, why don't you talk a little bit about that? So, the chisel stock from uh, from Chisel Machining, they uh, they right now only offer a pistol grip version of it. And uh, the first thing I wanted to do was I wanted to convert the pistol grip to a straight grip. So, I milled and cleaned up and polished mine and converted it to the straight grip. Just to add, because I had a painted wood stock on here before, and I wanted something a little bit different. So, the chisel stock is was actually perfect for this thing. And once again, it's just another proprietary part that I modified to fit to this gun. And it's just, I think it adds a lot of character to it as well. Yeah, so Chisel Machining is going to be releasing a straight grip uh, skeletonized stock. They don't currently have one available, which again is why, as with pretty much everything else yeah. on this gun, this gun is like proof of concept. Yeah. This, is, this like, is a big prototype gun. Yeah, so, um, you know, also, you know, there's Phil's personal preferences. Phil, despite having giant ham hands. <laughs> I do like straight grip stocks. <laughs> yeah. You know, I have tiny little girl hands. I do not like them, right? I like having a big loop, right? Or medium loop lever. Um, but again, that's, that's stuff that we can tailor. Now, let's talk a little bit about what we can do for you at Mad Men. So everybody sees this gun and everybody says, hey, I want this. All right, cool. Step one. You need to source the rifle. We can build it with a Marlin 1894. We can build it with a Henry Big Boy in 357. Uh, I mean, theoretically, we could do it in 44. We never have because nobody's ever asked. Um, I would have to talk to Silencer Co. about uh, pressures for the Osprey on that. But um, oh, that's the other thing is so uh, this is designed and we machine the rail to fit the Silencer Co. Osprey. This is an Osprey 9, right? So it works very well for that. It looks good. 
Um, having it tucked in also prevents any kind of rotation on it. And to answer one of the most common questions, yes, to remove the suppressor, you need to remove the handguard, which involves taking out these two screws right here, one here and one on the other side, all right? So you send us an 1894 or a Henry. What we're gonna do is we are going to put an excess rail on the top. We are going to put a, a Midwest Industries handguard that we are going to relieve to fit your suppressor of choice. That's why there's a few things I need to know when you tell me that you wanna do this, when you start placing an order and send me a gun. One, what is the suppressor? Because if you don't know, I can't relieve the uh, handguard properly and your suppressor might not fit, right? All of the ones that we've done so far like this have used Osprey suppressors from Silencer Co., which is a great choice because, I mean, it looks cool, it works well. I mean, this gun is stupid quiet. It's so much fun to shoot. Um, so we do that, right? We do our typical, you know, our typical action jobs, loading gates, the, the whole deal, right? Uh, trigger upgrades. This one, as all the guns we build, has a Wild West Guns trigger in it, right? Can't speak highly enough about the Wild West Guns triggers. Um, so we can do all that. We can do it on your gun. You need to get a tax stamp. We don't build... We are an 07 manufacturer, or 0702, but I'm not building factory uh, SBRs. I'm just not going to do it. So you have to get the Form 1. You have to SBR your rifle. Once I get the Form 1, the stamp comes in from the ATF to you, and you send me a copy of it. That's when we start cutting the barrel. Okay? Um, the suppressor, I have a lot of suppressors here. Um... If I don't, basically, I don't need you to send your suppressor. I just need to know what it is. If it's something I don't have or can't get access to, we'll work that out, right? Um, but that's pretty much it. So those are the things that I need from you. So that means you're going to be, this is a two-stamp gun. It's an SBR and it's got a suppressor. So that's $400 in stamps on top of what it normally costs, right? Now, talking about cost... On these things, you're generally in the 2,000 to 2,500 range. It's gonna depend on a lot of things. Do you want the chisel stock, right? Do you want, well, that's really one of the largest uh, things is the stock choice, right? We've done them with straight grip. We've done them with uh, pistol grip. It depends on what you wanna do. We can convert a straight grip to a pistol grip. We can also convert a pistol grip to a straight grip if you so choose. Uh, 1894s, and you know, Phil being the, the Marlin guy that he is, uh, I'll be the first to tell you, they made a lot more 1894s with a straight grip than they did with a pistol grip. So if that's your hang up and you don't want a straight grip, we can do that. I stock the parts. Um, so, yeah, a lot of the 70s guns, uh, 60s, 70s guns were all straight grips. They didn't start manufacturing the pistol grip 1894s until much later. Especially uh, post-safety. This one's a pre-safety one. This is actually a mid-70s gun that I came across years and years ago. So, yeah. So, you know, there's a lot of different stuff out there. Um, we have a lot of options. And can we make a gun like this? Absolutely. Right? If you look through our Instagram or our Facebook, you'll see a few different ones we've made. And we've done all sorts of stupid stuff like put M203 grenade launchers on them. We can do that for you, too. If you want an M203 mounted, we can do it. But this is generally what they're gonna pretty much look like. All right, there's gonna be some slight differences. Um, you know, you can see, talking about proof of concept here, you can see on the rail here where, uh, where did it get cut and welded? Oh, right here. You can see how this M-lock slot is slightly smaller than the others. Well, that's because that's where Phil cut it and he <laughs> welded it, right? Um, we don't do that anymore. Um, yeah, you'll have uniform inbox slots. <laughs> yeah. So there are there are certain things that uh, we were able to use this gun to prototype, be a proof of concept, and we've refined it over the years. So uh, I hope that answers some of the questions about, hey, what is this gun? How do I build it? Also, you got to meet Phil, Buffalo Diller. You'll see him around more. Um, and uh, yeah. 
Thanks very much. Let us know what you think in the comments.